Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Buttermilk Barbecue Smoked Chicken. Well, I think the secret's out. Buttermilk soaked fried chicken is about as good as fried chicken gets. You see what happens when that chicken's soaking in the buttermilk is the cell walls start to open up, suck in the moisture, and it really tenderizes the meat. But there's no reason why fried chicken should get to have all of the fun. So today we're gonna be smoking up some buttermilk soaked barbecue chicken on the Yoder Smokers loaded Wichita offset smoker. Now I've got a bucket of chicken that's been soaking in buttermilk overnight so that we can get started on our smoke today. And we're gonna walk through that process here shortly. But the first thing I wanna do is get the smoker fired up. We need to get our charcoal going. So I'm gonna start a chimney of lump charcoal here in the firebox, and this is gonna be the base of our fire. So we'll light up our starter cube with the torch. Just let that get going. So now we're gonna jump into making that buttermilk brine, which is really a combination of a brine and a marinade when you consider that we're using both salt and acid to break down the chicken. But in any case, it's really easy. Three simple ingredients, and we're starting with the buttermilk. So we're going into our eight quart briner bucket with three quarts of buttermilk. Next we have our dry brine mixture. This is the butcher house brine from Cattleman's Grill. So of course we've got salt, we've got a little bit of brown sugar, we've got garlic and onion and some other spices in there. This is just a great versatile base for a brine. And finally we've got Killer Hog's hot sauce. We're gonna go a quarter cup. Now nah, let's make it a full half cup. This part you can kind of adjust to taste. If you want a little bit more heat in there, do as I do and we'll do a half cup. If not, a little less, a quarter cup. So more acidity, more flavor. And that's it. We're just gonna whisk this to start to dissolve the dry brine mixture. And then we're gonna break down our chicken and get it in here. Now we're gonna be cooking up two chickens worth of chicken pieces today. And I'm gonna show you how I broke those chickens down. We're gonna start by spatchcocking the bird, just removing the backbone with a nice, strong pair of shears. So come down one side up to the top of the neck, and we'll go back down the other side. And then when I get to this little joint bone here on the thigh, I usually will just pop that out, and it tells you right where that joint is. It makes it a little bit easier to cut around it. So that allows us to kind of splay this thing open. I'm gonna get rid of these bones, we don't need them. And then right here where the breasts meet, I'm gonna give this a little bit of a snip just to help break that open. And we'll flip this over. Now I want this bird in eight pieces in the end, but we're gonna start by quartering it. So we come to the thighs and just cut right in between the breast and the leg meat. Do the same thing on this side. You can kind of let gravity do the work for you if you like. Separates really easy. And then you can either leave these quarters whole or if you're going for eight pieces, we'll cut right in between the leg and the thigh. Pop that and cut right behind the bone. So now you've got your thigh, your leg, and another leg and another thigh. Go ahead and drop those in. Now the breasts we're gonna leave bone in today. So I'm gonna start by cutting straight in between the two breasts and you're gonna hit that breast bone. So a little bit of pressure on it to pop through the breast bone. And now you've got your breasts and your wings separated. And instead of pulling off the wings, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take the top portion of the breast And so now we've got a breast portion and a portion with the breast and the wing attached. And this is just a preference thing. You guys can break these down however you like. But now that we've got this thing into pieces, there's so much surface area for this buttermilk to soak into, and it's gonna give us a really juicy, tender product, not to mention all the surface area that we now have for putting rub on later. So lock those in place and throw it in the fridge. 
Well, our lump is hot all the way to the top now, so we're gonna dump that out on the back side of our firebox here. We're gonna keep our coal bed pushed to the back of the firebox. We're gonna run a small hot fire so we get a nice clean burn. We'll go ahead and throw a couple sticks of apple on top, and then one more right in front. This guy's just gonna warm up, so as soon as he's ready to roll over, we get instant combustion. All right, we're just gonna close this up. We'll bring our door in a little bit. And then we've got the butterfly wide open, as well as the stack. So we've got full open airflow. That's gonna bring the temperature up. We're gonna stabilize it at about 225 to 250. So now we're ready to pull out last night's chicken that's been soaking overnight. And by the way, you can go just a mere eight hours if you're leaving this in all day, say while you're at work, or you can go up to like 24 hours, whatever you have time for. I wouldn't go a lot longer than that. I'm sure there are cases where it works out fine, but because of the salt content, we wanna keep it under 24 hours. We'll start to unload here. And as we do this, we're just gonna kinda of wipe this excess buttermilk off the outside. Give it a little dab when it hits paper towel there. So now that we've kind of got these cleaned up, we're gonna hit them with our barbecue rub. Piece by piece here, we're just gonna give them a nice coating of the Meat Church, the Gospel Rub. Just a solid, all-purpose barbecue rub. It's got your sweet, it's got your salt, it's got great paprika color in it. Just an all-around great all-purpose seasoning especially when it comes to barbecue. All right, we got them all ready to go. All right, well, we've got our smoker running about 250 right now, maybe a little bit warm, but that's fine as we get all this cold chicken on here and choke down the air just a little bit. We're gonna be sitting in that 250, 225 to 250 range. So we're getting this loaded up with our chicken. We're gonna give it a good amount of time just to kind of get some smoke going. And then we'll increase the temperature at the end to help render out the skin. Well guys, we're almost an hour into the cook now. We've been feeding fire to try and maintain around a 250 degree temperature, but the stuff on the right is cooking a bit faster since it's right next to the fire. So we're gonna switch our stuff around and then we're gonna throw some more wood on and crank that temperature up. We need a little bit higher temperature to finish off the skin to really render out the fat and now that we've had an hour of just soaking up that smoke flavor, we're ready to crank up the tin. So here's part of a breast uh, that's been sitting right by the fire, and here's the other half of that breast that has not. So you can see the color difference. We're just gonna go ahead and swap these out. All right, so we're gonna go two pieces of wood over on the fire now to crank up the temp. We'll open up this airflow just a little bit as well. Get another log in there to preheat. All right guys, well we've been temping these away. We're an hour and 20 minutes or so into this process. A little bit shy on some of these pieces, but some of them are right where we want them. Once we hit about 155 to 160 in the breast, I'm gonna start pulling those. Now we come down here to say like the legs, we wanna go all the way up to like 175. So we're getting really close. 170, 175 on the dark meat, 155, 160 on the white meat. Let's start pulling these pieces down. And as they come off, we're just gonna glaze them with a little bit of barbecue sauce. We'll cover these up and keep them warm while the rest of the food finishes. So today we've got the Firebug Mild Grilling Sauce, one of my favorite barbecue sauces. Got great fruit flavor to it with those blackberries and raspberries in there but it's also got a really nice peppery note. And of course it's a tomato based sauce. I'm just gonna do a thin layer Whoop, as I get carried away here. Won't assume anybody wants too much barbecue sauce on, but we do wanna add a touch of sweetness there. It looks like we've done a good job of rendering out this skin here. We've got some great color and I know it's gonna taste plenty smoky. So we got this cook done in about an hour and a half today, but I don't want you guys to be glued to a timeline when you're cooking, ever. But especially today, when you think about all the different kind of cookers that we use. If we did this on a pellet grill, it would take longer. It probably would take longer because it's gonna take longer to get that color on the outside. Now, if you were to do it on a Kamado Joe, 
probably not gonna take as long because it colors up even quicker. So keep in mind that we had a couple of goals today. One was to get smoke on. We gave it about an hour of smoke. That could go in either direction. The other was to kind of finish off the skin in the end and finish at that 155 to 175 range, depending on if we're talking about the dark or white meat. This is what an hour and a half looks like for us today. And this thigh right here has been calling my name. Oh man. That's everything I want on a barbecue chicken. I mean, you got a nice bit of skin that we can bite through. Got an incredibly juicy interior. It's salty, it's sweet. And man, the texture of that meat, it's just pulling apart. That buttermilk really did its job. You know, I always love when I get to cook on the offset and we hear from you guys a lot that you wanna see more food on the offset. But let us know what you wanna see. I've got a lot of ideas for what we can be smoking, but I'd love to hear from you guys as well. And thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comments section down below, and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.